Hi, welcome to your second brief lecture on chapter one. In our first lecture, we talked about what organizations were, the role that they served, and how we measured their uh, performance in terms of productivity. And we also looked at what managers were and what role they played in organizations in terms of helping to promote that productivity. In the second lecture, we're going to talk about the management process. And the management process clearly identifies or delineates the four major functions, stages, phases of management in contemporary society. And it is really important that you understand the management process with respect to what these four functions or roles are, but also the relationship between these four functions and roles, because it is this management process that is going to guide or frame our entire course. So it's really, really important that you understand and you get these concepts because this is going to be our guide throughout the course, okay? So it says here that managers achieve high performance for their organizations by best utilizing human and material resources. We know that. We saw that in our first brief lecture. We said that managers support, activate, and are responsible for the work of individuals in organizations. And I mentioned to you that it's the managers that are able to bring together and facilitate the interaction between people, money, materials, all of those inputs, such that the organization can work together to create and fulfill a common purpose. It's the managers that kind of bring all those things together. If you would like to look at them as conductors in an orchestra, okay? They bring all these separate parts and entities together to create some kind of cohesive uh, whole that we in society value. And managers do this, they're able to facilitate this interaction and able to support, activate, and, and account by the process of planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. And as I mentioned before, when we looked at the definition of what managers did, they support, activate, and responsible. I kind of linked those to these four, the planning, organiza organization, leading, and the controlling, okay? And I'm going to talk to you now about what these are. And as I said, it's not just important for us to understand what these are individually, but also to understand the relationship between all four. And all managers, it must be understood, are responsible for all four of these functions. So it's not just doing one of these really well or individually, but doing them and doing them in a way that interrelate. Okay, so that's important. What are these four functions? Well, at the very top, you see planning. Well, what is planning? Well, we all kind of know what planning is because we all kind of plan, all right? You plan to take this course this semester. How did you do that? Well, you created an objective. That's always the first part of any plan. A plan is created to fulfill some objective. You perhaps wanted to graduate early. You wanted to graduate early. That was your goal, okay? And the way that you were going to do that is by taking summer classes. So what does that show you? Every plan has two parts to it. The first part is to set an objective, what I want to achieve. And the second part, which is as critical, is how to achieve this, how to achieve this objective. So I first create an objective, and I then determine how best to achieve it, okay? My objective is to have a great vacation this summer. And the way that I will do that is by going on a cruise. That's a plan. I have an objective and I have a method. I know what I want to achieve and I must know how I want to achieve it. Your plan is your very first step. It sets the ground rules. It lays out the framework, right, by which you will behave by which you will act. You start off with a plan. Many times in life, we don't start with a plan, okay? We don't start with a plan. And you have, you heard this adage before, if you fail to plan, then plan to fail. Well, that's not necessarily true. Every situation in life does not require or call for a plan. But many times, especially for very complex or very important decisions or important activity, we plan. We set a guideline out and then we pursue it. Once we've planned, 
our next step is to organize. And what do we mean by organization? Well, in organization, what are we doing? We are arranging tasks, people, and other resources to accomplish the work. Again, as we said, managers, what do they do? They bring all these parts together. They arrange all these parts. So I like that term arrangement because oftentimes you will hear when you're talking about a symphony conductor, you'll hear the term arrangement. This person arranged this piece of music. Essentially what they did was that they created a plan initially. They knew what they wanted it to sound like, right? So they created this, this wonderful music. And then they or arranged the orchestra to be able to play that music. What do we mean? Well, they designed specific roles for each area. Let's say the wind instruments, the, 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 the drums or the cymbals, the, the flute, right? Each one of those parts had a specific role, but they were able to, what? They were able to bring those roles together by determining what parts each should play and how best those parts should come together. That's what organization is deciding on what needs to be done, identifying who is going to do what part, and then finding a way to group similar activities together. So everybody who's kind of playing a flute instrument is kind of together. Everybody that's playing like a, 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 a drum or a cymbal type instrument is together. And then coordinating those groups in such a way that you have this cohesive arrangement. That's organization. That's what we do in firms as well. We identify specific roles that each individual is going to play. We group individuals together and we bring those groups together. We integrate their work together so that we have this coordinated activity that, oh, that I'm sorry, achieves this common purpose. Okay? So once we do that organization, we have the arrangement in place. But is that all? You see many times that a, um, a conductor goes through practice, goes through practice with, its, uh, with, with the symphony. And what they're doing there is that they are trying to motivate the parts of the symphony to do what they're supposed to do and also to work together. That's called leading, inspiring people. It's not enough just to create the arrangement and say, you know what, they'll do what they're supposed to do. No. Many times people need to be motivated, they need to be led, they need to be given support. Coaches do this all the time. Once they've created their plays and their arrangement, they practice it and they run it and they inspire their players to do what they're supposed to do and do it in a way that will lead to success. And then once the plan is implemented, once the symphony starts or once the play is run, the conductor is there, the coach is there to make sure things go smoothly. And if they're not going smoothly, they will make changes to bring the system back into sync. Bring them back into sync. And once it's over, they will use that information to help, guess what? To plan for new symphonies, for new coaches, for firms, for new, excuse me, activities. So it's a feedback. It is continuous. We plan, then we organize, then we lead, and then we control. So planning, we know what we do, objectives, what we want to achieve, right? And how we're going to achieve it, organization, getting those allocate, assigning tasks, I'm sorry, deciding on what needs to be done, giving resources to those that are required, who needs to do what, and finding ways to group those individuals together and then coordinate the activities of those groups to a cohesive whole. In the leading, it's all about motivating, arousing enthusiasm. We want you to work hard. We want you to do things, but do it in an effective and efficient manner. Do the right things and do things right. And then controlling, measuring what is being done as opposed to what was planned, what the objective was, what was the requirement, what was desired, and seeing how best we're fulfilling those desired objectives. So that, in a nutshell, is the management process. It's just a very quick and brief description of it, but it is an important, sorry, it's important that you understand it clearly because as we go along, you will realize that our entire semester, our entire course is focused on these four phases, these four roles, these four functions, whatever you want to call it, and the relationship between all four.
So it's good that you have a clear understanding of it. And, and as I said, think about it through the perspective of an entire example. I use the example of a symphony, or you can use the example of, of, of a coach and an athletic team. Okay, start from the plan and get into the control. Okay, go through plan, organization, leading, and control. I'll leave you with this example. It sometimes works for my students. I hope it might help you to understand it. But uh, think of the, uh, the example of Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein and his creation, Igor. Okay, you all know the story about Dr. Frankenstein, perhaps, and he created this, this, um, this robot or this monster. Dr. Frankenstein had a plan. He knew exactly what he wanted to create. He wanted to create this entity, and he wanted to do it in a specific manner. So he had an objective, and he had a method. He had a way of creating, that was, sorry, uh, of fulfilling that objective. His next step was to organize Igor, to actually get the parts together to build the monster. Once the monster was built, it lay there lifeless. There was no life in Igor. He had to then motivate it. He had to charge Igor up. And when he charged him up, that was the leading. That was the inspiration. That was the motivation. And then once Igor started moving, he had to evaluate whether or not Igor was doing what the plan required him to do. And you would see if you read the story that Ego didn't necessarily follow the plan, which was why there were so much uh, problems associated with that. So planning goes into organizing, that goes into leading, and then finally controlling. So if you get stumped, think about Ego, I guess. Hope this was helpful. Uh, on to chapter three.